Hi, I'm here today with Jack Chikalian, a professor of physics at the University of Arkansas. We're going to talk today about superconductivity. So many people have heard of superconductivity, but I don't think many people know how it works. So can you explain to us a little bit about how superconductivity works? Well, superconductivity is really a spectacular phenomenon. Perhaps this is really your closest view to the quantum world. And in fact, this is the quantum material in its best, you know. So this material is so unusual because at room temperature, when you look at this and touch it, it wouldn't be any different from any metal or semiconductor, you know, and uh, in, 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 in real life. But uh, once I cool it down to nitrogen temperatures, um, liquid nitrogen temperatures, a very low, uh, low, low temperature, then all of a sudden the features change dramatically. I see you have some superconductive material here. Uh -huh. um, can you tell us what we're going to see when you pick it up and put it here in the liquid nitrogen, ah. what the audience will see. Right. Uh, that, that's a very, very good uh, sort of point. Uh, and what will happen, unlike many other materials, when you bring them together, uh, they either do nothing or just attract each other, like the magnets would do, for example. Uh, this material will repel magnetic field absolutely. And so if I take a piece of magnet and just drop it on the top, that magnet starts levitating right in the air. Okay. Here I got the magnet, a very powerful 90 mm magnet. And so what I'm going to do, I want to put it on the top. So first I pre-cool a little bit because it's warm. You see it boils off because it's in liquid nitrogen. And I try to put it on the top. And now to prove that it's really levitating, allow me to do one thing. I'll spin it. I'll spin this magnet. Okay. And if it's really levitating, as you can see, it starts, starts moving oh. in this motion like this. Wow. And, and if it's shine, you know, the light, you could see, I could spin it again. That's amazing. And, and given the certain amount of this material, like we see it now, it's a bigger chunk, that we could levitate basically anything you want, anything, any metallic system. You also brought with you today a superconducting material that is at a different scale. It's actually at the nanoscale. This is the material we started working back to 2006. And so what we've done, we actually reproduced the same materials, but in nanoscale. So we took the same ferromagnetic material and the same superconductor and created a nanoscale version made of atomic layers of these materials. And this material is absolutely cool because in the nature you would never ever find anything like this because nature would not tolerate any material of this kind of property. And what it does, it actually would become a fundamental uh, 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 property of this material, is to become the foundation of the next generation of electrons we call spintronics. Can you tell us a little bit about how the properties of the superconductor at the nanoscale differ from the properties of the superconductor at the macro scale? So basically the same material, but depending on the size, you could see it's very different, right? So here is the speed of execution. We can go instead of gigahertz, for example, to terahertz. So thousands times faster. Um, here, you could start lifting things. You know, there you can really lift a train with this thing. Of course, you cannot lift anything here with the with the nanoscale material. So it's a it's a different world depending on the size. So this world is a faster world, and this world is a greener. It's a mighty, world. yeah, it's a greener and mightier. <laughs>